again. I'm going to teach you a little bit about Civil War cooking. Um, the civilians in the Civil War did not have to cook outside. They did not have to cook outside because they had, <laughs> typically because they had kitchens inside. But since I don't have a historically accurate kitchen to cook in, I'm going to show you how we do it at Civil War reenactments. Uh, you have to have a very hot fire in order to cook whatever dish you're going to cook. Um, on the menu tonight is bubble and squeak, which is our main course with beef. And then we're going to have um, um, fried ham and apples. And we're going to have fresh melon. We're going to have bread and butter. So, um, I'm melting butter in a pan here. Um, let me tell you the terminology of these things here. My cast iron pot gets very, very hot, so you have to be very, very careful on the edges. This is called a tripod, which is also made out of cast iron. And um, I have a blower, which has a big hole in one end and a little tiny hole in the other and it helps us get the fire going hotter by blowing air. No. Uh, no. All these dishes that we are making are from 1865. Um, they are very popular. Um, they are, with a war going on, they are thrifty. They could make use of leftovers. They could feed lots of people. Not too much because by the end of the war, a lot of people had lost a lot of money. In butter. This is a real fire. It's really blowing really smoke in my eyes. It's very hot. One thing I wanted to tell you about fires is open fires were often a very dangerous thing for women in skirts because they would be getting close to a hot fire trying to get it hot enough to do their task or their chore and often not notice that their long skirt being in the fire and uh, we even had friends who caught in their skirts on fires at reenactment. It was definitely a threat to women getting their either severely burned or sometimes even death. A lot better. We're going to add apples. took a long time in a civil war. Oftentimes you get up really early by five or four or five in the morning depending on if your family was farmers or not. You'd get up really early and start making your meal and then after you're finished with the first meal you'd uh, start the second meal. You gotta heat the water because there's no inside water so you gotta heat the water. It's flowing. You gotta heat the water to wash the dishes and wash the dishes, then do the second, then start the second meal, and finish that one, need to wash the dishes, start the third meal. Usually in the Civil War, the, the main meal was in the middle of the day, and then have later, later uh, things to eat in the evenings. This is a bigger meal, even though it's in the evening for us here, in the United States. This is looking really good. 
gonna add some sugar. This is cane sugar. Looks a little different than white sugar. But cane sugar could be available from plantations in the south. Or very far, far south. So, I'm going to set a plate just to show you. This is our Civil War feast here. I'm going to wash this and put it out here. I'll show you guys. These are their forks. They only had three prongs. Made them a little different than our forks today. But other than that, their other utensils were pretty much the same. So, here we are, ready to enjoy our Civil War feast. <laughs> 